Hyatt's Cayman Reynolds. We're about a day or two from November. It's getting cool. We've got to get feed on colonies that need it. Also, we need to do what we can to help the colonies that are a little bit smaller make it through winter. And there's definitely a balance. We're going to have a live chat this weekend. So that's going to be um, tomorrow, which is Saturday at 7 p.m. We'll leave the date and information pinned in the top comment if you'd like to be a part of that and ask your winter questions. But we've got two colonies right here. One was sitting down on the other side of this pallet, but this one's a little bit weaker and we'll show you and they both need a little bit of feed. This one not so much, but they're gonna help each other make it through winter and this strategy works very well. All right, so, it is very cool. We have had just boatloads of rain and we have been so busy with the conference and so many other things and bee work, it has just been a challenge. So I was already in this one earlier, smoked them down a little bit, I've got probably four and a half to five frames of bees in this hive. There was a patch of brood maybe about the size of my hand. Not very strong. The queen is very new. Um, you know, they're okay colony. Our pattern was pretty good. They just got a late jump in the season and they weren't able to build the population up near as good. Where this, this queen came back around the end of June and has had a long time to build up a good population. It started out with a bigger one. You can see a lot of the bees coming up. We have a double screen board in between. You can't see this one very well. Here's an example right here of what it looks like. And up towards the front, you can see we have an entrance right here. And there's a hive entrance down at the bottom and one right here. Now let's uh, go on down below. We're gonna feed both of these colonies. This one only probably has around three deep frames worth of food from what I could tell earlier. All right, there you see the screen. This was the first prototype I made of this. Well, the type that I built myself. There's a decent bit of weight up in here. Definitely could use more though. And we're, we're gonna use a bucket feeder for that hive but you can't use a bucket feeder for the one below. So I'm kind of looking down in here, just kind of seeing what's on the bottom board. Really nothing that concerns me at all. You can see this nice green, letting all that heat from this much bigger colony. You can see where the smoke went through and pushed the bees down there in the center. There's a good bit of bees up on this board as well. So this is how they're gonna share heat this winter. And this bigger hive is going to just send that heat right on up. And I, once we get done feeding the top colony, I'm going to put, I've got some insulative uh, R5 boards, and I'm going to put that underneath the lid to kind of keep that heat in. Not necessary, but anything that we can do to help our bees out is definitely good. Small hive beetle. Ah, hate those things. And there's plenty of them. The problem about this time of the year is, man, everything is so propolized up and everything like the beeswax and the bee glue is just so cold it it's harder to move it around. Let's see what they've got up here. Oh, there goes another one. Wow, there's some brood on this one right here. And I'm looking down in there and I'm just seeing a bunch of bees down at the frames below. This is a good sized colony. You can see some of the feed that we have fed in there. And they're filling it where that brood is emerging out. There's some young bees in there and not everything is... Oh, there's a drone right there. Every now and then we'll see some drones this time of the year, only on the bigger colonies. Look at these small hive beetles. One just crawled up my sleeve. And you know what they're doing? They're hanging out with the bees because they'll keep them warm during the winter time. They will feed them. They're able to communicate with the bees in the dark and trick them into thinking that they are another bee. And the bees will feed them and help sustain them through the winter. Don't you just hate nature sometimes? Nature is um, awesome, but it's also sometimes extremely frustrating because 
uh, you can have some creatures that are just really good at manipulating the system, you know. These, uh, these beetles, they love their handouts. But I'm surprised. I'm seeing a good bit of brood right here. Great queen. Let's uh, grab one more frame. These two frames don't seem to have quite as much food as I would like to see. And we, we need to give this colony some more feed. I'll be feeding them the next few weeks, probably a gallon every couple of days until they get full on up. This one's, this frame's quite full. Yeah, okay, here's the food. You can see where they've capped most of that. Good healthy looking uh, carny bees right there, just tons. Look at all these small hive beetles. I said this in a talk earlier, this is a great time of the year to put some traps in. Um, you, you know, it would have been better if you'd have probably done it in September here in Tennessee. But it's, if you get it to them late and get it to them early, you get those beetles when they're really uh, more vulnerable because they're really not reproducing right now. In the summer, it's just a constant battle. But that's what we like to see right there. In a colony this size, I'd like to see eight to nine frames like that. So I'm, I don't know what's in the bottom. I can check that out another time, but I want to see eight or nine. And then it, let's say we have three like that in the bottom. I want to pull those up. I want to bring those up into here and put the lighter frames down below. Because what the bees will do is start down at the bottom and then they'll work their way up towards the food. And I want there just to be tons of food up top. Plus with this colony above, both of their heat being kind of right there um, towards that double screen board is really going to help both of those colonies uh, do well. Here we have another frame I believe has brood in it. Not much on this side. Yeah, lots of food down in there. That's good. We're really not going for a ton of brood this time of the year or anything like that, but the big colonies will have a little bit scattered here and there. Yeah, you can see just a little bit of mm -hmm. speckling of brood in there and another drone or two. So this hive's in good shape. If they still have drones right now, then it is a prime colony. I expect good things out of this colony. For those of you who have followed us for a while, this was, I never got to moving it. This is the same colony that had that heavy mite load and we had to go through a lot of work to save it and requeen it multiple times. And they produced over a hundred pounds of honey this year and then superseded their queen and right after the honey flow ended. This colony right here, I'm gonna give them two to one probably four gallons, maybe five gallons. So I've got to get on that. I'm running a little bit behind on some things. Conference is taking a lot of time, but this double screen board is gonna make it more efficient for the colony up top and help them out tremendously. Those little colonies just can't regulate the cluster and the hive near as much, especially when they start rearing that brood in February, it'll help them quite a bit. So let's get to feeding them. And I almost forgot. So here's some two to one right here. We've got a very expensive and professional grade <laughs> feeding system, patent pending. And we're just gonna throw that in there like that. And it's very warm. I, you know, it's about 100, 105 degrees, I'd say. And that'll be really helpful to these bees to go over and, and work that a little colony wouldn't be able to take it like this. Well, darn, the floats didn't come on up. I doubt they need it. There we go. Got some wooden sticks in there. The bees, if they drop down in, they can kind of get a pump on there and uh, relax for a second. Catch their breath. Bees, uh, they love that sugar syrup so much, sometimes they will just keep eating and not even worry about getting up on something. So it's, it's nice to give them several options. All right, now we're going to feed this other colony. We did this many times last year and, and the year before. This one's still got some pretty good weight in it. I'm pretty pleased with that weight. A little bit more will help. And we had several colonies again like this that we overwintered with the double screen board that had a great queen, just a little bit small of a cluster that big hive underneath was able to help them out tremendously and, and they went on to produce 100 pounds of honey this year. A um, little bit of help from the beekeeper's part, a little help from some other hives. This is just smart beekeeping. 
beekeeping is really starting to um, change a little bit. It's really not you know, going crazy. It's just we're learning techniques and sharing that information amongst one another to help us do better and help our bees do better. And that's, it's, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that to me. So we can't use the reflectix piece for this because we'll need the bees to be able to access the bucket. We have this uh, plug right here, a little tent plug and nice drilled hole. And one thing that I like to do many times, um, especially if it's robbing season, you know, let it, the vacuum kind of catch on this, especially on a little colony. You don't, that's a lot of syrup to be spilled all over the place and you know, yellow jackets or other honeybee colonies will be attracted to that syrup. So it's best to get the majority of it kind of in another container like that. And now they will spend plenty of time um, sucking that down. Um, the bucket feeders, one of the biggest advantage of bucket feeders is the fact that the bees can kind of warm that syrup up a little bit and cluster around that and they'll take it in colder temperatures. Big colonies like this can easily handle that frame feeder right now when it's in the 50s. We're probably not going to get out of the 50s um, hardly at all this week, but I'm still feeding away, dropping down into the low 40s at night, uh, probably a couple 39 degree days. I still feed two to one. Some people say don't, but we do. Anyways, if you'd like to uh, ask some questions about what we did here, leave them below, and thanks for watching this video.